Ein Universe. This is a place where I invite special people that will inspire us some way or another. This is a mini series that I have created called um, Inspiration From. Anyone who has something to say will be on my show if they like to be here. And today my show is, uh, my uh, guest is in London. She is Sandra Phillips and she is a fashion lover. But um, she doesn't really work in fashion and she will tell you. Her, um, um, her um, we met, first of all, we met in a Facebook group and we kept each other's company for a while until she, it, she immediately struck me for her way of using clothes in a very particular, very artistic way. And um, she achieves it, this great looks by putting together things that are out of the ordinary and with great accessories. Now, she will tell us, she dresses like she is in art, a walking art. So she will tell us all about, she is Sandra, and let's welcome Sandra. Sandra, welcome to the show. Hello, Valentina. Thank you very much for inviting me on your show. It is my pleasure, especially because I am a fashion lover just like you are. And you will tell us all about your ideas. It is a very clever and very original idea of what you do with the clothes because you don't work in the fashion industry, right? That's correct. Right. Your work has nothing to do with fashion. But nothing, nothing at all. Exactly. But you are such a an original person when you dress so tell me what what is this that you do what what is that what why you created what you created tell us what you do first i i am passionate about what i call pre-loved clothes uh second-hand clothes recycled clothes call them what you want I am passionate about them. And I realize that I don't want to be dictated to by the fashion industry, be told what I what I should be wearing for a woman of my age, and I'm 61 years old. So I do not want to be told after all that women of our sort of age have fought for over the years, I want to be my own woman. I want to find where I am happy and, and that's what I've yes. done yes. so I decided that I this was actually quite a few years ago but it's very much been um, an organic thing and has developed I've always loved clothes I grew up uh, both of my parents were in the swinging 60s fashion scene in London and I grew up very much around that. So it's in my blood. And um, I've always loved clothes, but I've always had my own style. I've never liked wearing what everybody else is wearing. Exactly. Exactly my concept. <laughs> and I love color. Yes. That is also my passion. And I see, again, so many women of my age hiding in black and navy and beige and blending in and they think somehow that 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 is right but it then they've lost their style we were yes. such a stylish generation of women we had the swinging 60s the glam rock 70s disco 70s the fabulous new romantic 80s and then all of a sudden we lost it all and we went into yes. this sudden, I think women want to hide somewhere yes because 
they don't, I think, other than have lost it, the style, they've lost the confidence. Mm. I think that's what it is. They've lost confidence. And so they want to hide behind the neutral and the dark, yes. the gray yes. and the black colors. What do you think? Yeah. Absolutely. And they're also told that if they wear black or navy, it makes them look slim. And and, yeah. and again, the whole diet industry thing, we are told how we should look. We are told how we should feel. We are told what we should wear. But no, yeah. we need to find what is right for us. Absolutely. And, and this is what I have done. I have taken this and it turned into my complete passion. I spend yeah. all, nearly all of my spare time going around, I, I think you call them thrift st uh, uh, shops in the States. In England, we call them charity shops. Yes. And I find the most incredible clothes um, that nobody else wants um that they've exactly. maybe, been, maybe been sitting in their closets for years and they're having a clear out and nobody wants to wear them and i find all these amazing clothes and some of the occasionally i go to a vintage shop but i tend not to because they tend to charge a lot of money yes but there's what the wonderful thing about what i do is it means that I can create unique outfits from totally different pieces and nobody else will be wearing the same as me. Yeah, you're Plus, right. You're absolutely right on that. Yes. yes. It's incredible the difference in the quality of clothes that were made 20, 30, 40 years ago to the quality of clothes that are made now that are just disposable. Yes, absolutely. Today is fast fashion. Yes. It's just like fast food. You Absolutely. wear it one, twi one time, twice, and then it's out in the garbage. Yes, filling, exactly. Filling the land, land field, and it's, it's just incredible. And so many kids are being exploited because under the age of, you know, uh, because of their the way we um, require fashion to be fast. Yes, you yes. Know, something exactly. you buy... Three months ago, it's not even in fashion three months later. Exactly. I don't, I don't even know how designer can keep up with the expenses that they are put through to fulfill the demands. It, it is, it, I think it's just, it's, and it seems to be getting worse. Absolutely. And yeah. you, like you say, all these. Yeah, these countries, the slave labor manufacturing this throwaway fashion. Absolutely. It's uh, it's just something that in the past they did not do that. They really cherished their clothes. Yes. Yes. I remember my mom was a fashion designer in her yeah. life. Mm -hmm. and she worked until she was 80 years old, yes. just right yes. three months before she died. Yes. And... Uh, the, the clients that she had were the same for all her life mm. because of the fact that they cared for their clothes. And mm. often, yes, she created new clothes. And other times, my mom had to remake something they had mm. because the fabric was good. Yes. The, uh, the style maybe was not so modern, but she updated it with a new style. Yes, and, and, that that changed, and sometimes just changing buttons or colors or whatever, the outfit became very new. Absolutely. But it's uh, it it is something. It's um, I don't know. The in the clothes of the past are much better um, in in quality, much better. Uh, totally. I mean, I've got things that belong to my grandmother that mm. are still the most incredible quality um that yeah you just can't get things like that now absolutely not so this is why you have you ever bought uh new clothes i so rarely buy new clothes now um occasionally i will see something but again it's not something that i go out to do i might see something um that I think that's really good, but 
again, I will check the price. Mm -hmm. um, I won't pay. I've made it my own personal um, goal not to pay full price for anything. So mm -hmm. I make sure it's in a markdown, it's in a sale, or mm -hmm. it has to be a really good bargain. Right. And I mean, the thing is, I can find new clothes in charity shops. Absolutely. I, so many yeah. things I buy still have the label on it. Yes. yes. I, agree. I, mean, I I bought a pair of um, uh, shoes uh, ooh, a few weeks ago, um, and they were just – they completely unworn. Um, they – would cost me 190 pounds if I'd mm -hmm. bought them new and they were actually six pounds, which mm -hmm. you know, what incredible. ten dollars. I mean incredible. Yeah. So, but you you have to know I think it's also about knowing what you, you're looking for. Right, right. And you know, I, one of my friends, she is size two, mm -hmm. <laughs> something like that. She's very, very thin. She says that only idiots buy at retail. Yes. <laughs> because no, she I buys, agree. just like you, on a secondhand store, from secondhand store, from vintage, and she can find these beautiful, beautiful clothes, be stylish, mm. uh, good quality, and special buttons on it for very, very inexpensive yes. price. Yes. Absolutely. But she can afford to do that because she is size too. And a long time ago, women used to be very tiny with a very tiny waist. So they, yeah. I'm not size two, unfortunately, and I'm not a big person either. But sometimes when I go to um, a secondhand store, I see the size that I want, but not the size. And that well, I don't even worry about the size because it. You know, if I if I see something, or you know, obviously I can't wear something that is too small. But mm. I, I am sizes mean nothing now. Once mm. upon a time, sizes were standard, but now yeah. they mean yeah. they mean nothing. Right. And right. sometimes, you know, I try something on which I think is going to be way too small, looking at the size, and it fits, and or otherwise it. I think it's going to be massive because if I look at the size, I think it's going to be big and it's not. And, and also I can do very basic alterations, which helps. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can do yeah. that too. Yes. yes. In fact, today uh, there's a lot of uh, asymmetrical uh, mm. lines that we can use and not tailored, uh, yes. that tailored yeah. look that used to be in the forties. Mm. Yeah, with those things, I can get away very easy, really, really yes. easy. And yeah, me too. You know, and I know, I know you do a lot of these asymmetrical uh, yes. lines, styles. In fact, this uh, red outfit that I see here on uh, yes. on my screen, uh, the top looks like um, an oversized or uh, a top. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a plus size top, mm -hmm. and I am nowhere near plus size. But it doesn't matter because you can make it work. Exactly. So now when you find one piece that you like, yes. you always find something to go with it, whether no. it's a, uh, an accessory no. or the top or bottom. or I Occasionally I'm looking for something very specific mm -hmm. I in, in a color or um, – a fabric or something like that. I'm looking for something specific. But more often than not, when I walk into a charity shop, um, because as I say, it's become my passion, my hobby, whatever you want to call it, and right, I walk right. in, but I do not browse through the rails. It literally has to leap out at me as I walk through the door. Mm -hmm. And my eye will find the things in the shop just literally as I walk in. And uh, as I say, sometimes I'm looking for a specific color, and I am very blessed to have a an excellent color memory. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm thinking to myself, right? Well, I have a pair of purple trousers at home. I could really do with a purple jacket in a you know, and and I will find the purple jacket. I do not 
my my collection has taken me a long time to build up because I don't buy just anything. I am very very selective in what I buy, right? And right. I go for the quality. Mm -hmm. I think the quality and the color are the two most important things for me. I won't buy something just because it's a designer, although I've got lots of things um, designer. Again, um, a, a, a few weeks back, I bought a pair of Salvadori Ferragamo um, loafers in a charity shop for eight pound. And I looked online and their current season then, 590 pounds oh, oh, short oh, their own dollars but the, you know and so i and but the point was i put them on and they fitted me beautifully because i have quite narrow feet and italian shoes are nice and narrow and i put, put them on and they fitted beautifully i wouldn't have bought them had they not fitted me i won't just buy something because it's a designer because mm -hmm. there's plenty of designer stuff out there which I really don't like. True, true, that's very true. Uh, yeah. But then when you buy, let's say, shoes, right? You buy secondhand shoes as well, yeah. right? Of course, yeah. Uh, don't aren't you afraid of uh, what do you do? You disinfect them? Aren't you afraid to get something someone else had? Maybe no I, well, clothes i wash and shoes i wipe them out with um an antibacterial wipe on the inside and that's it mm -hmm. and that's all i do and in the several years that i've been doing this i've not had any problems Very so, nice. so no and it's the same when i buy jewelry i wipe that over with antibacterial wipes i think probably the only thing that i do not buy from a charity shops is my underwear mm -hmm. and that's the only thing that i don't buy from a charity shop but everything right. else jewelry gloves mm -hmm. hats you name it i buy from the charity shops it's incredible so you've always uh recycled in your life I can, I can tell you one it. thing. You know, I'm Italian. I grew up in Italy. Yes. And uh, my parents taught me, or my all my kids, or my uh, all my brothers and sisters, to recycle. Ever since we were mm. uh, good enough to understand, yeah, they taught us to recycle anything. And yes. you know, to these days, I recycle anything. Mm. I, I mm. recycle. So I recycle clothes as well. So yeah. You did this all the time, or is something that I, you picked up at one point in your life? I think I probably um, started doing it when I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. but it's something that has developed uh, probably over about the last five or six years, and especially... Um, my husband passed away in 2016 and mm -hmm. i think really it took off from that point mm -hmm. because um i just f i needed to embrace something in my life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um having been his carer for a very long time mm -hmm. um, i sort of lost myself and i needed to find myself again if you can understand that Okay. And the way that I could do that was to find myself by finding my style, my love, embracing color, embracing life. Very nice. Very nice philosophy to mm -hmm. not let you uh, yourself down. Yeah. and get into a different path of maybe depressions. In fact, I think colors helped you a lot in this process, right? Oh, very much so, very yes. much so. I, I, I love my color. I, it, it's funny, even going back to when I was at school and I remember my art teacher, she said to me, the one thing about you, Sandra, is that you're not afraid of color. And I have always, always loved colour. I've never been afraid to have bright coloured paints and furnishings in my house, 
whereas everyone had again has the beige and the I know, you know and everything and it and it's also for me it's also boring it might work for someone else but it doesn't work for me i'm not saying people shouldn't have it but for me it doesn't work exactly. me i feel good when i have vibrant colors around me so the vibration of colors will change your life and Definitely. your attitude in anything you do. Yes. Just bring that vibration in and you will see that the transformation of you starts right away. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. happening Definitely. with positivity. It's like, I know I cannot stress enough about this. Yes. Mm. So I see you in your, are you in your closet, sitting in your closet? I'm or where are you now? I'm actually sat in front of my half-built closet because, unfortunately, I, I moved house in December mm -hmm. and the carpenter who was building my closet, uh, this coronavirus came along in the middle of it, so mm -hmm. it's half completed. Oh. But this, this is, this is the, the main closet. Mm -hmm. And people always say to me, wow, you must have rooms full of clothes. But no, I don't. I've just got this one closet, which is a little bit bigger than my hand. And then I've got one on either side mm -hmm. that has my jackets and one that's full length that has dresses. And that's because you can achieve that because you have a photographic memory. You yep. know exactly the colors and the styles you have. Mm -hmm. And you can shop accordingly to something that you can pair with that or the other. And yeah. you know you have enough of clothes to make a lot of combinations. That And that's the thing. It's, it's my own personal challenge to myself to never wear the same outfit twice. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just down to different accessories, and we can change an outfit by exactly. the accessories we wear. Exactly. Whether and it is a scarf I mean, or that earrings. In a European way, I believe. Yes. Because it's the same thing in Italy. Uh, yep. When we buy an outfit, we buy with a an idea in mind. Let's say I have a uh, brown tailleur. What can I put with a tailleur? I can put a long mm -hmm. skirt. A pants, mm -hmm. a short skirt. I can change the, sh the scarves. I can change yes. the shirt. The jacket and the skirt are the same, but I can change a shirt. And it's the same tailleur that goes yeah. around many, many Yeah, I, I, um, I completely understand. And uh, as I say, it's, you know, I, I am, you know, I have it all in the colors because what happens for me is that I choose my clothes on a daily basis, um, yeah. primarily based on the color I wake up feeling. Mm -hmm. I wake up feeling a color, and that's how I build my wardrobe. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's a specific item of clothing mm -hmm. that leaps into my mind when I wake up, and I think I really like to build an outfit around that item of clothing. In the winter, for example, it might be a hat, mm -hmm. my favorite hat, and I want to build an outfit around that. Um, but my outfits are never planned. They are completely spontaneous every day. I'm terrible when I go away on a holiday because I just don't know what to take because I'm too spontaneous. I have to go with what I'm feeling, and I feel a color. I, it, that sounds strange, but I feel a color. And no, it's not strange. It's not strange because there are some uh, uh, systems to color mm. your week. Each color, mm. each day has a different color, mm. and mm. sometimes it's used for people to remember things. Like yes. on a Tuesday, I do this every Tuesday. On a mm. Wednesday, I do this with. And if so, if you see that color, you remember what you're gonna do. But often. Yeah, it's a it's a treat. It's um it's kind of an analysis to mm. to use each day with different colors to yeah. push you or to encourage you to do something. Yeah. Something whatever it might be. Maybe it's a subconscious, but it's like for example, I might make up in the morning feeling red and so I will look at 
some a red top in my wardrobe and think okay i'm going to start with that and i also the other thing is i don't try on lots of different things somehow it all comes together very very quickly because i'm again it's the spontaneity and it i find it is my creative process and mm -hmm. it's like creating a very quick work of art yes do you think that the uh, grey weather of London helps you getting into vibrant colours? Um, no, I think it's just me. <laughs> I, d I think I'd be the same anywhere. Anywhere, yes. Um, I and anywhere I was, uh, yeah, I, 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 I always like my bright colours. <laughs> I agree. But I, I, I wear black and I wear grey, but... It, yeah, it's I very well you do in a very different way because I can see yes. here in the on the screen you have a black and white uh, a yellow outfit or blue yes. is that blue dark blue no it's black it's black so yeah it's really vibrant it's really yeah it's a very illuminating of with all yeah. that yellow yeah uh, and it's it's like I will wear yellow tights with it. Yes. just to to lift the black exactly. I, I i wouldn't dream of wearing all black yes yes and yes. um there'll, there'll always be some sort of quirky um detail to my what i'm wearing exactly. um to, to make it that just that little bit different exactly and so i also see that and that's what struck me about you that you make drawings out of your clothes that you wear every day mm -hmm. uh, okay um, someone is writing uh, on um, on uh, Facebook you're uh, fantastic and uh, always magic meetings and thank you guys <laughs> um, so I was saying, I see that it just struck me about you, the fact that you draw the outfit that you mm. make. Okay. So well, that's, that's something that came about, um, again, after my husband died, uh, I saw a therapist for a while. Um, I had always been very artistic. My father was an artist my grandfather was an artist and they they're all very un they were very unique artists and strangely enough they all began obsessively um creating pieces once they hit around the 60 years old mark mm -hmm. but sure as i say i saw a therapist and she tried to encourage me to draw and i'd had an art block for something like 40 years Right. Even oh, though I knew I could draw, it, there was something that stopped me. But she tried to encourage me. And then my daughter, who's um, a fine art student, mm -hmm. um, said to me, Mom, you know, just try drawing. Just just do something. Just, just draw. So I thought to myself, I got dressed up. This, is, this was what, um, coming up to three years ago. Um, I got dressed up and I thought, I, I, I draw what I'm wearing. And it was like an instant addiction. And from that point on, pretty much every day I do a drawing of what I'm wearing. And so what happens first, your drawings or your clothes? You, you get first oh, dressed? I get dressed. And okay. then you draw. And then I draw. I draw um, very much my um, interpretation of what I'm wearing in my mind. Um, I might look down at what I'm wearing and just for a bit of detail or something like that. The pose that I do is also from my mind. So I know enough about figure drawing. Um, and they take me about 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how detailed they are. Um, and 
it's just it was i read somewhere that do something today that you can look back and be proud of and i have this every day and i can look back and i'm now on my 12th vol sketchbook full oh, of wow. drawings <laughs> so and there's there's 50 pages to each sketchbook and i'm no. now on my 12th sketchbook and as i say I, I love it if i don't do it it's it's a meditative thing mm -hmm. yes it centers me because i am totally focused on the drawing Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm not worrying about what I have to do today. I am totally focused on that drawing. Very nice. And and from my imagination of my outfit in my head, it's this whole total sort of from here down onto the paper. Right. And, and that's what I do. And then I take some photos after that. And and then I create my little posts that I put on Instagram and Facebook. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, you draw at night after you finish no, everything. No, you this in is morning. in the morning. In this the is morning. every morning. Yeah, I'm Before a very early work. work. <laughs> I'm a very early riser. Nice. So um, yeah. I I get up. Um, I have a coffee. I have my breakfast, I have a shower, and then I get dressed and then I draw. And, oh, and that's it. It's a wonderful way to start the day. Very it really relaxed. Is. It really and, is. And very happy about your colors and your outfit. Are you always very happy about what you put together? Or after you yeah. put it together, you say, well, I could have done this or that? No, or no. No, it, I've learned, I've also, another thing I've learned through this drawing is not to be a perfectionist. Right. Um, right. If I make a mistake when I'm doing the drawing, I leave so, it in. Yes. And if there's something, I, I actually normally really like what I'm wearing. Um, right. All of my clothes that I buy, I love. I love them all and I can't bear to let go of them, although I do let go of some of them every so often. Mm -hmm. um, but I know what works on me. I know my body shape. I know what's going to work. Mm -hmm. I know what I want to achieve that day, what I want to feel mm -hmm. in what I'm wearing. Um, and, and what I do you want to transmit to others? Do you think of what you want to transmit to other? I don't care about anybody else. Okay. I do it all for me. Good. All for you me because where I work, I could walk in in a paper bag and they wouldn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> so you come through you come through as a very confident person. Yes. I am. I I I have always been pretty confident. So um, and uh and and I think my clothes are a reflection of my inner Yes, yes. they are psyche. They yeah. Are. yeah. Are you yeah. planning on doing something with these drawings? Well, a lot Writing of people, a book or making something, a course or? Well, a lot of people have suggested a book. But the other thing that I'm hoping to do, and I was planning to do it just before this coronavirus, was I was going to run workshops at weekends. Right. Um, for women and men who want to learn how to embrace their own style and uh, with pre-loved clothing and and mm -hmm. just to try and help them feel good about themselves and to create something for themselves. And I've, I've sort of started doing it over the last year or so, taking women out shopping. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we, we go out to the charity shops and we i get them an outfit which is always outside of their comfort zone 
Mm -hmm. because uh, nine times out of ten they would not even consider what I will find for them right. and then right. we get then we come back to my house or I go back to their house and I style them up in it we get accessories everything for this outfit and then I will take some photos and then I do a drawing of them and I give them the drawing Great, great idea. Great and, that's idea. What I, and I want to develop that. I want to, I know that something needs to happen with this because I feel like what I'm doing is unique. And so many people have said to me, what you're doing is unique. It is. It is. Um, you know, with the drawing and everything. Yes, and yes. even the name of my website, Dress Into Art, because I am taking literally taking what i dress and turning it into art it is an art form it's my canvas it's my creativity absolutely i mean art is not what we see on canvases only no art no. is anything and dressing is an art form yes if you know how to dress right and, and it's not something you cannot learn this is no. something you can you can learn and, and it's uh, about confidence. It's yeah. about confidence. It's about confidence. So that's what people have to do first. First, yes. build their confidence. Yes. And, then, and, and, and actually, when when people, the, the, the ladies that I've worked with so far, and when I've got them dressed up outside of their comfort zone, and they just love it. They, yeah. they wouldn't have dreamt of wearing that item of clothing, but when they see themselves in it, styled up, and and then after that, they want to run. They want to mm. go, and, go and do yeah. it all over again and go and get more things because they suddenly realise that there's so much potential out there. Yes. And they can find their own unique style. So. And that's probably the best way to do it because nowadays everything is massified everything mm. is flat mm. and global yes yeah i don't like this world global globalization i do not like it no because like that we have lost really we have lost our identity we have lost our character mm -hmm. and why each one of us is a different creation Yes. Everyone has something different to offer. Why do we have to be all so massified, so flattened? That's what I say. We're flattened. And yes, I we are. I refuse to be like that. So. Yeah, I'm good for you because because that's what it. You know, this is, and it's and it's about being able to stand up and say, "I am me." I'm not yeah. anybody else. I am me. Swimming. Yeah, I'm swimming upstream. It's yeah. much more difficult, but more rewarding. Yes. yes. Yeah. Definitely. So I, I like, I don't know if you can, but I would like to see some of your thought process. What, what do you do when you put things together? Right. Is it My possible to show us something? It's just a little thing. Right. Okay. So say I wake up in the morning um, mm -hmm. And I am feeling orange. I'm just going to grab something in orange. Okay. So I have a pair of orange pants here. Right. Okay. And okay, I'm looking at the weather. And actually, it's quite nice today. So, what do I have in orange in my wardrobe? Do I want to wear a color block? Do I feel completely orange or am I feeling orange and teal or orange and brown? Or great, great orange. combination, great. You know, and, and, and this is it. And then I think, oh, actually, I think I quite fancy this with the orange. Okay. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes. So, okay, so this little silk shirt um, is handmade from the 1960s. These I bought in a charity shop for one pound. Nice. Okay. Nice. 
<laughs> so so this is this is what I will put on. Then yeah, yeah. I will um, look at my accessories. Mm-hmm. Um, do I want to wear a scarf with it? And mm-hmm. I have all my scarves in colours. Mm-hmm. Or do I want to wear some jewellery? Or do I want to wear a combination? Um, and, again, with the shoes, now, do I want to wear something neutral with that? For example, do I want to wear a gold shoe mm-hmm. or do I want to wear a teal shoe? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it really is very, very spontaneous. Mm-hmm. Um, as I say, it, it boils down to the colour. I will start with a colour, one colour. And then mm-hmm. it's where do I go with that colour after that? Mm-hmm. And then quite often the next step is what is the weather doing? Because, mm-hmm. it, you know, the weather's so unpredictable in England. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, you have to sort of give that some thought. It's not like, uh, you know, like every day is the same weather. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, I mean, I also to a certain degree, have to be fairly practical. So this would be something I would wear for work um, because... If you would choose a, a scarf, would you choose a contrasting colours or one of the two? Again, um, I probably would go for something more in orangey tones because mm-hmm. just because it just sort of pleases it. I like... Although um, I like strange combinations, I do like a certain degree of order and symmetry mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tend to like things that are very well coordinated. And I've, I think I've probably always been like that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, people used to joke when my daughter was growing up, even when she was a baby, that um she always had the right accessories and it's like I I will have to I've got um I'll just quickly show you for example sorry excuse me whilst I get these out because I think this you'll find this quite interesting okay here is my box of gloves Mm -hmm. in every single color Right. Because that, I love leather gloves. And so, I, you know, I've got everything from gold all the way through to black. And I can see they're also well coordinated in the box. You Absolutely. go from the, like, a, a, like a, a rainbow, like a, a color scheme. You are all in yes. color. Scheme. Yes. Yeah. And that's it. And that, and my scarves are very much in the same um you know layout so as i can say right i want a green i want i want my green gloves um and i want a a green scarf and Mm -hmm. i mean i do know all the clothes that i have that's the other thing i you know i know what i've got so i just i you know it's right okay i that's what i want to wear and it's like i i keep accessories fairly um i've got lots of different colors of these um sort of button earrings and rose earrings because they're so cheap Mm -hmm. they you know they're about uh a pound each and i get them off ebay and i get them in every single different color because if i don't actually want to wear anything too quirky or too outrageous i've got every colour that I can possibly wear with the earrings. Exactly. Um, as I say, I, I, I mean, I, lo- I love my gloves. And, again, they're all from charity shops. And, mm. you yeah, know, it's... It is so important to me to... It's almost like um, the thrill of the hunt... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sort of, oh my goodness, I have just seen a pair of emerald green gloves. Wow, yeah. I have to have them. Right, right. right. And, that, and that's how it is for me. Yeah. 
And what about the jewelry, for instance? Do you like to uh, accessorize with crazy jewelry or you just go with more gold or silver? Oh, no, no. I have all different kinds of jewelry. If you just bear with me a second and I'll uh, get some so as you can have a... Right, so I don't know if you can see. I have them all yes, on clothes, yes, hangers, yes. Oh, yeah. everything, and I and I've got about six of these hangers full of uh, um, necklaces, and then I have um, boxes full of earrings and mm. um, brooches, and yeah, you know, I I it it really does depend a lot on what I'm feeling, where I'm going. I would probably dress far more outrageously, but the job that I do is a very dull, boring job. And I have to, I find myself toning it down a lot. But I, at the weekends, I love to get dressed up and go out. It's your it's expression. It's the expression of yourself. Exactly. And exactly. the weekend you allow to be who you are. Yes, yes. yes. <clears throat> you know, you have inspired, and this is what's all about, these mini shows that I'm creating inspiration from. It's about inspiring others. You have inspired me. Even Thank though you. I love fashion, I love colors, I love everything that you do, but you inspired me as well. Because... Well, Inspiration is never enough. And and that's what I want to do. I want to inspire people. I don't yet because it's all about finding what's right for you. I can't find it for you. You have to find it yourself. Exactly. And yeah. but we sometimes need to be inspired to do that. We need, um, we, need we need a push in the right direction. Exactly. Some people, yes. until they are shown how mm. different they can be, they don't know. Mm. They don't know. So, I, I mean, I was, I was hugely inspired a few years back. Um, again, my daughter had said to me, oh, there's this lady she'd seen a, um, a video of. Um, she's called Zibora Salomon. Mm. And she... I watched this video and I thought, wow, she has just got such an amazing sense of style. Mm -hmm. And she inspired me. She was one of my biggest um, creative pushes in my mm -hmm. life when I saw what she did. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, so we all need someone to give us that little bit of a, here you go, and this is what, this is it. Yes. So I hope that uh, the right person will see this video. And I'll, I really wish you to get somewhere with this idea because I like it. Um, I was inspired and um, I keep looking at your creation. And I now I'm going to actually I'm going to my wardrobe every day and say, Okay, now I'm feeling red. What can I do? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, fun. it's a it's good fun. starting point. It's yes. a good yes. starting point. Just take a color. Yeah. And yeah. and see where you go with that color. Exactly. Exactly. And people have to learn that colors are not hurting you. No. They're actually helping you. So. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So I know your Instagram is uh, dress into art. Yes, right? that's right. Yeah. Right. So please follow Sandra and um, dress into art because you will find very interesting pieces there. And do you have a website that people can go visit? Again, it, it was something that I was in the stages of developing along with these mm -hmm. um, workshops that I was going to run because I was going to um, sort of put details of them. Mm -hmm. But it's all on hold at the moment. Mm -hmm. And because I had a friend who was coming over to help me with it all and we were working through things. But unfortunately, we can't do that at the moment. So it will happen. 
in its own good time. We just wait until we all can get out again and start our life again, and it will be, I'm sure it will be done because yeah. it's needed. Because you do, you have something special, and you would like to. I'm sure you would like to put it out there. So yeah, I do. continue doing what you're doing, and your Instagram is pretty good. Um, so people, you have a lot of followers. So keep doing what you're doing and keep inspiring Thank you. because Thank you. that's so rewarding. It is so rewarding. It is. I I really feel good about doing it. Makes me feel good. Absolutely. And I know that you, by helping others, you make others feel good as well. So they, it, can yeah, it works both ways. Works both ways, yes. Yeah. So for right now, I have to wrap the show. Okay. I'm so very happy you've been on the show, and I'm so very happy to have been inspired. Um, so uh, next time when you have something big, Let's do it again. Let's uh... absolutely, absolutely. Well, I I really appreciate what, what you've given me this opportunity, and thank you. It's my pleasure, my pleasure, and uh, we will do it again. I'm sure we will. Definitely. Okay. So I'm okay. going to wrap the show now. I'm going to close, but don't go away. Okay. And, um, until uh, next time, we will. I will still have an inspiration from. I'm looking for a particular person that can inspire us, all of us, while we are on uh, forced vacation. Uh, <laughs> that's the way I take it. It is a vacation. So yeah. although it's forced, it's still a vacation. But we, we still need to have our life going. Uh, so we will be moving in the right direction. So until next time that I can see another person inspiring all of us, I will uh, give you a big kiss to all of you, you. and uh, peace, love, yeah, until we'll see you next time. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>